The Singing Bones, written and told by Rowan Morrison. The bones sung, the cunning woman listened to what they had to say afore carefully putting them in the pot and placing them above the lintel of the door. Sometimes their songs were mere like riddles, but today their message was clear. The old woman for Glenaig was tell that her one-legged husband would be dead afore the next lamb was born on their croft. The message confirmed what the woman expected. She rewarded the seer with a single coin and a noisy cockerel, afore hastily taking her leave to plan a, a grand funeral for her husband. The seer's infamy grew with each passing week. Soon, she would no longer hate to take cockerels in exchange for a prophetic message. Soon, it would only be silver coins. It seemed that everyone wanted to ken what the future held for them. Young women wanted to ken when they would hear bairns, girls, the name of their future husbands. But the islanders, the sky, might not have been so keen to reward the seer if they knew where the messages came from. For they were God-fearing folk who held many a superstition. Granted, they were happy enough to come and have their fortune tell, but they wouldn't be happy to ken that it was a bones or a murdered soul that was doing the telling, nor would they be happy seeking the services of someone who had robbed the grave or a thirteen-year-old child. In those days, the stealing of bones for the kirkyard would be considered an unholy act. The cunning woman, Betty MacLeod, from Kyle would be named as a witch. In truth, that was what she had become, a practitioner of the Black Earths. Betty had heard the bones sing as she passed by the kirkyard in hot summer's day. I would not lie in his bed, so my father he held a pillow over my head, and now I'm dead. No, most people would be frightened by such an occurrence, but no Betty, she had heard the deed talk afore. The restless spirit was eager to tell her terrible tale, oh how her father had taken her life after she refused his unnatural advances then claimed that his oldest daughter had been taken by a sudden illness in the night, subsequently burying her body without fuss or further ado. Cunning by name, cunning by nature, Betty promised it she would tell the girl's story if the spirit would do her bidding for a year. Well, the girl had already lain in the grave for three months, and was worried that her father, a widower, would turn his attention to her younger sisters. The ghost begged the cunning woman to help her immediately, but this plea fell on deaf ears, so she agreed to be bound for a year in exchange for help. But no a day longer. Well, Betty dug up some of the girl's bones to complete the binding pack and kept them in a pot made of red clay and rowan berries. While they were inside the enchanted container, they were quiet. But when the pot was opened, the bones foretold the future with song. As you might imagine, the prediction of death, birth and marriage was a profitable business. It would be a year tomorrow since the deal had been struck but the cunning woman. She had been infected with a sickness of greed and had no intention of honour in her side of the bargain. Exhausted for another busy day of telling fortunes, Betty fell into a deep sleep. In her dreams, she was visited by her grandmother, Donald. The old woman, she taught her the old ways and had gained her a book of charms on her passing. Well, she harshly scolded her granddaughter for misusing the gifts, of foretelling her to look out for a chance to put things right. 
when she awoke the next morning. Betty vowed to help the girl. When a knock came to the door, it was a, a young woman inquiring about a love spell. The cunning woman was just about to shoo her away when she heard the bones rattle loudly in the pot and remembered her grandmother's words. So she invited the young woman to sit by the hearth and to tell her a, a bit more about the man that she had set her heart on. He's a widower with two young daughters and a fair-sized croft down in Armadale. He did have another daughter, but she was cruelly taken by a sudden illness just over a year ago. Fate will he its way. Betty agreed to help the woman, saying, The way to a man's hair is through his stomach. I will give you all the ingredients for a meal that will make you just irresistible to this widower. And I he mere than enough cockerels, and I'm sick of their crowing. So Betty, she prepared the love potion and gave it to the young woman with strict instructions that it was only her intended that she eat it, warning her not to taste a drop if she ever wanted to marry him. As it happened, the crofter's favourite dish was chicken broth. Mmm, it smelled delicious. He could not wait to dip his spoon into the bowl and eat every drop, complaining that he had me had a decent meal since his wife had died, adding that his late daughter's cooking was so bad that he often thought that she would be the death of him. It was the last meal he ever tasted, for he choked on a strange looking chicken bone and died right there at the kitchen table. The next morning, Betty McLeod from Kyle Ree buried the rest of the bones in the girl's grave, and they sung.